Hi, welcome. Thank you to my subscribers. I really appreciate your comments, feedbacks, and likes. To my new subscribers, welcome. And uh, if you like the videos, like and subscribe if you want to, if you haven't already. Okay, so today I'm gonna to have a very interesting video for you, like extremely interesting. Also, full disclosure, I'm unsponsored, completely amateur, so my opinions are genuine and uh, uncensored. So today I'm gonna to be doing um, the third shave with the Kai blade um, on that single, uh, sorry, on that double-edged razor. And I'm gonna be reviewing the um, Captain's Choice uh, Bay Rum. Now, I've used Captain's Choice before, and uh, I've used their Lime and their Venture, and I really love the Venture. The Lime is excellent, but the Venture is, uh, is amazing, the scent. And the slickness is, uh, I think, one of the slickest soaps that I've ever used, and not paid. So I put a gram in here, which uh, is the standardized measure that I use, and I'm just using a synthetic brush, and the Heritage um, with the Kai blade, so the Gillette Heritage with the Kai blade for the, for the third shave. And let's have a chat. Okay, so I wanted to talk more, like the last two videos, I started to talk about Japan and um, my time uh, as a Japanese chef and my martial arts experience from the age of six years old. And um, the West has a lot of ego and um, where we feel that we should be taught something for free. And a sense of entitlement. Whereas in traditional cultures, um, there was no, there was no internet. So you couldn't just find something out. It was meritorious. So you had to earn it, you had to, this is very cinnamon with some sweetness underneath, but extremely cinnamony. Um, it has that spice smell to it, but cinnamon is, a, is certainly the top flavor with some sweetness in it. And so it was a meritorious culture. Uh, it still is. And in Japan, uh, it's really the pursuit of perfection and the pursuit of purity and uh, mastery uh, of the elements and of the self. And this is seen um, as a religious pursuit, uh, as uh, something which is um, revered at the highest levels of values and beliefs in the Japanese culture. So um, I'll give you a story. Um, there was a very famous Japanese swordsman. His name is Miyamoto Musashi. And Musashi is um, a very, very famous swordsman. Um, during, there's a good book, it's oh, maybe a thousand plus pages, two thousand pages, uh, on Mus called Musashi. And uh, I, I highly recommend it if you're interested in, in, in learning something about more about the depth of um, the legend of Musashi. And Musashi... Um, taught himself a uh, sword and he thought about swords as an extension of the spirit in a scientific manner, I guess you could call it. You could call it like a, a form of spiritual uh, scientism um, for the Japanese. And um, he was challenged a lot um, for his swordsmanship. And like the closed door martial arts that uh, I've been privileged enough to learn, um, it's uh, Japanese uh, sword fighting is one strike, one kill. It's to kill the opponent in the least number of moves in the most efficient manner possible. Um, and so the MMA and the boxing that you see today is nothing like true martial arts, which is uh, one strike, one kill. Um, snipers in the United States have uh, a saying, one shot, one kill. Well, it didn't start with them. It uh, started uh, much earlier than that, thousands of years ago with the martial arts. And so often the, the victims of, of uh, bullying, harassment, or um, people who have seen their families being murdered, these victims are usually the best students because um, they'll keep the secrets. Uh, they're not using it for violence. 
and so they they're more able to select and to be trained and to listen to feedback um, so this is very very important okay I can tell you this soap um, I don't like the scent straight away I don't like the scent but it's um, if you like spices um, then this is this is the thing especially cinnamon if you want cinnamon forward with a bit of sweetness almost like a fruitiness but spice and the cinnamon in it is really overpowering and I'm not a huge fan of cinnamon I'll put a little bit in uh, some baked goods but uh, or maybe in, even in a hot chocolate but uh, cinnamon is not my favorite just let that sit on the face so Minyamoto Musashi uh, kept on getting challenged and um, he fought and he won and his legend grew as he uh, won more and more battles against these famous swordsmen unfortunately he realized the brutality of of killing somebody but he just want he just wanted the purity and the mastery and he wanted peace and quiet so he began um, to farm and his favorite food was something called soba which is like a Japanese uh, pasta if you will you can have it hot or cold it's a buckwheat noodle and uh, he started growing first pass he started growing his buckwheat and uh, what he discovered was that every time the rain would come it would wash away his harvest 48 hours of growth by the way I didn't manage to shave or do a video yesterday and he kept on finding this field that nobody wanted um, that it, nothing would grow in it and he sat there and he thought about it after he'd had three of his uh, harvests being washed away and he noticed something This field that nobody wanted, that couldn't plow it. He noticed there were these irregular patterns in the way the rain would wash over the soil. And what he did, let's feel that. It's picking up hair, but certainly not around the rough parts. The soap is captain's choice, man. That's a really super slick soap. Yeah, if you have the chance and you want to just save money, um, I think captain's choice, if you like the scents, I, th I don't know if there's a, it's amazing. So he noticed that the there was irregularities in the field and the way the rain would fall. And the Japanese mindset was, at that time, was, you know, growing based on symmetry and have a square field. But he noticed that, um, that the rain would fall in a pattern. So rather than plowing the field, he dug the trenches where the rain had naturally eroded the soil and washed away his crops. So he dug the trenches in an irregular manner. And the next time the rain came the rain went down naturally to follow the way of the earth to follow nature to work within the confines of the element that presented itself that would express itself in that way and this is a Japanese way. And this is a traditional way, even in the West. So, as a chef,
Our goal is to master the cutting instrument, especially in Japanese cookery. The swordsman's sword is his life, and the chef is also his knife, his sword. My point being is that when we observe a chef cutting, and when we observe things, we can tell their level of competency. And there is a way of mastery and an extension and an ability to further that mastery, which is what Musashi did. Now, a very famous master challenged Musashi and he asked not to fight this master and they thought it was cowardice, but it wasn't. It was the fact that Musashi had an extraordinary respect for this other master. So Musashi took his sword and cut a thick stemmed flower and sent it ahead to the master. After the master had received this flower, the master declined to fight Musashi. Do you know why? Why would one of the most famous swordsmen, undefeated, receive a flower and refuse to fight? Because he examined the flower and he saw the cut. He knew the level of mastery. So when we see another chef, those who are trained, who are chosen, and only the meek are usually chosen. We can see the level of competency that somebody else has. And this, this is why the story of Musashi, I, I want to explain it because it's so illustrative. And this is why many techniques are now being lost. Because Somebody wants a worthy student to teach. Not where the expectation is to teach me for free. And so the way a chef will hold a knife, the science of it, even though you could cut, even with a rusty nail, the science of cutting, the science of sharpening a blade has been done for thousands of years and this knowledge has been handed down. So there might not be the perf like the, the right, there are many right ways, but there are better ways and there are ways that people before us have mastered that can hand us down that successive knowledge. And so Musashi is an illustration of problems with the Japanese culture, but also the highest level of respect, honor, purity, and the thought process that would go into mastering things. And that is why the legend of Musashi is so famous. It's not for the fact that he was this brilliant swordsman and that he was some Marvel superhero. It's the fact that he thought about how to perfect something and dedicated himself. And so this is um, very important.
when mastering skills. And using a straight razor and a safety razor is certainly a skill to have. And it's something that requires a bit of dedication and persistence for those who know how to use it. To be able to shave oneself in a safe manner without cutting yourself or giving yourself irritation. It takes time to dedicate oneself to mastery. Okay, so my review of the captain's choice. I just like the scent. I'm not a fan of cinnamon, but if you like cinnamon, it's fantastic. This soap, I can tell you unreservedly that three of the captain's choice that I've used have incredible slickness and incredible comfort. And the third shave of the Kai is in fact marginally better than even the second shave. So this 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 Kai um, this Kai um, razor blade does improve over the over uh, a few a few um, uses so far. This would be considered a, quite a good shave for me. Yeah. It's uh, still not smooth as some of the other blades that I've used. So let me wash off all the slickness because this stuff is really hard to wash and I'll finish my story and click and do the post shave. And so there's a lot of controversy on how knives and blades should be used and what's their elements so like the difference between say push cutting and um and slicing and most people don't understand what's the difference between a push cut and a slice and the way in which i can tell you is an axe is a pure push cut and um a slice is a saw like sawing through a tree and this is why it's a chain saw and it has serrated edges on it so saws are good when they have some serration on it and push cutting is good when they're smooth and you can imagine the japanese mastering swords and cutting have that smooth edge because they want to push cut and they want to use terrific force and momentum of their whole body um, an extension of their body uh, which is how a knife it should be seen in any weapon or any tool is an extension of the body your mind your spirit your hand your your your, your tool whether it be um a razor a knife or a sword and um, the west are very good at say wielding a baseball bat and when you wield a sword it's uh, very similar to the way in which a, a baseball is struck it's um it's a whole body action um with terrific force and uh, one strike to uh, unfortunately uh, eliminate the opponent. Just like the secret martial arts is one strike to uh, eliminate the opponent uh, with tremendous force. And the idea is that you're not cutting the thing in front of, it, in front of you. Um, just like a karateka will um, strike um, ice. He's striking through the ice to the other side. Where his aim is, is on the other side of the ice where your aim is when you're sh when you're using um, a katana is you're not aiming at the person you're aiming to cut through the entire person and in the secret martial arts when you're aiming you're aiming to strike through the person with a very precise technique and in the secret martial arts you, you know like it's like an iron palm to the skull uh, we break coconuts it's like a, a, a strike through the neck and you're literally imagining decapitating the person so um it's very very dangerous stuff and this is why in the west um a lot of the traditional masters will frown upon the sport aspect of uh, mma fighting or boxing um, they will never put one of their trained assassins um into into those sports it's just not seen and it's disrespectful and i never disrespect my teachers 
to as um, as a beginner to ever use the the little bit of knowledge that I have for those things, uh, whether it be you know knife, sword, or hand to hand stuff, it's um it's to be taken on with the gravest of responsibilities, and uh, this is this is the way is to have that responsibility. So that's a little bit more of the story. You've learned a little bit about push cutting and uh, slicing. Um, I've talked about the captain's choice, uh, bay, run, bay rum, um, that I'm not a fan of this scent. It's cinnamony um, and it has an undertone of sweetness on there that I can't quite pick out. It is, if you love this, um, it's fantastic. If you like cinnamon, um, I don't mind it, I'll use it. Uh, but the slickness on it is, um, it's outstanding. It, it, it's superb. Um, and that's a nice shave. It's a really nice shave that I have today. That's that's probably out of the Kai Blade. Today is the best shave that I've had for sure, without a doubt, the third day. So the Kai is definitely improving and it could be the coating on the blade that's wearing off. So it has a smoother, sharper edge to cut coarse stubble. Anyway, that's my video for today. Um, I've dropped you into to a bit of knowledge. And so if you're watching my successive videos and you're following what I'm, what I'm explaining, uh, I'll get more into depth as we go along and hopefully share with you um, some of my knowledge that I'm able to. And uh, thank you.